Now, most of you probably know what I mean by caloric restriction, and if you don't, well, you definitely will by the end of this video. But what is less clear is the safety and the impact of caloric restriction in humans, and if it could increase severity or viral or bacterial infections. So hello, and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video, I'll introduce caloric restriction, why people think it could be beneficial, and then look at the latest analysis of a two-year calorie restriction study done in humans and see how it alters immune signaling. So firstly, what is caloric restriction? Well, the definition I like to use is that calorie restriction is the chronic reduction of total calorie intake without malnutrition, and this can range from 20 to 40%, but as we'll see in this human data set, it's apparent that the term can be used more generally. And besides the amount, it's important to note that without malnourishment is also important to consider as calorie restriction doesn't just mean let's just eat salad all day, but it's focusing on calorie count whilst maintaining different food components. And so calorie restriction has been shown in many different model organisms to extend lifespan and these effects appear to get more modest the closer the species are to humans. For example, you see lifespan extension in yeast of up to 10 times longer and in mice around 15%, and in rhesus monkeys, it's even more moderate. And here, these studies also show how food quality, besides quantity, is still important. So how does calorie restriction achieve these benefits in model organisms? Well, in terms of how it works, I have revisited a diagram that I was presented during my master's, which I think still distills best all the information and understanding about calorie restriction. It is the idea that high nutrients through over or continuous eating drives more signaling through normal biology that over time accumulates protein lipid or DNA damage that causes aging. So remember this is a very simplified overview. It also prevents the activation of pathways such as autophagy as it activates proteins like mTOR, IGF-1, growth signaling pathways which repress AMPK and sirtuin activity and so repair and protective pathways like autophagy decline. Moreover, in yeast and worms, combining calorie restriction with mTOR inhibitors like rapamycin don't show an enhanced effect suggesting that they're acting through the same pathway. But that's just the theory. What actually happens in humans, not mice, and does calorie restriction live up to the hype? And in my opinion, these are important questions to address since there has been some concern given to calorie restriction, such as increased severity to viral infections with impaired immunity resulting from the fact that building an immune response is energy intensive and under severe calorie restriction, the body may put its limiting energy resources elsewhere. Another thing often disregarded in this too is fertility. Reduced food intake is an ever increasingly common cause of amenorrhea, when females skip a period despite not being pregnant. And so anyway, there are concerns of long-term calorie restriction, but what can you do about it? Well, you need to look at data, and lots of it. And so we've spoken about calories, now to talk about calorie. Calorie is an acronym, so an abbreviation from, from the initial letters. <laughs> Comprehensive assessments of long-term effects of reducing intake of energy. Now, I made a video on this back in 2019, which I think came from a 2015 paper, which feels like ages ago now, but it was after 24 months of a one-year calorie restriction in young and middle-aged non-obese men and women. What they saw at this time point was a reduction in fasting insulin levels, a reduction in body temperature, reduction in resting energy expenditure and oxidative stress, and lower TNF-alpha circulating levels. And so TNF-alpha is a marker of inflammation. But they did point out in the study that nonetheless, the small effects on bone and occurrences of transient amenia indicate that clinical monitoring is advisable for non-obese individuals practicing this degree of calorie restriction. So the Calari study was trying to assess the feasibility and safety of calorie restriction. And for that reason, much data was collected for different analyses with different follow-up studies done in different model organisms to back up the biology. So this now brings me on to the recent study where they analysed human data from the Calari study where over two years humans achieved on average a 14% sustained calorie restriction, so already notably less than done in the model organism studies. And to examine the impact of the immune system, they looked at the thymus. 
This is where immune cells are made in the body and aging of the thymus tends to precede aging in other organs. Compared with controls, two years of calorie restriction significantly increased thymic mass and volume and showed indicators that they were still producing T-cells, suggesting that calorie restriction may even be protective. They then looked at adipose tissue gene expression as study participants unsurprisingly lost fat when they underwent calorie restriction. And what they saw was that the calorie restriction increased signaling in mitochondrial biogenesis. And what I thought was interesting was increased circadian rhythm signaling and a reduction in inflammatory and complement innate immune signaling. One gene they kind of plucked from this list is plag 2 g 7 which decreased following calorie restriction. The protein encoded by this gene is involved in regulating inflammasome activation. So they deleted the gene in mice to see if it would mimic the effect of calorie restriction in the mice. And while they saw the mice were protected against high fat diet induced weight gain and showed some signs of reduced inflammatory signaling, most notably interleukin-1 beta and TNF alpha, but not other common markers such as interleukin-6. So with the human data and the mouse validation studies, the authors conclude that calorie restriction in human studies elicit anti-inflammatory pathways that may improve adipose tissue metabolism and that the calorie data indicates that calorie restriction in humans over two years doesn't decrease immunological function. But what are my thoughts? Well, there is no doubt that this work adds to the mechanistic underpinning surrounding calorie restriction and its beneficial effects. Here they focus specifically on the metabolism, immune regulation and and inflammation connections by examining the thymus and adipose tissue and identify plag 2 g 7 as central to the process. Ultimately though, it would be nice to see further examinations from this trial into the impact of reduced food intake and reproductive health. It would also be interesting if they could have shown how individual thymus volumes changed and how that related to the calorie restriction that they followed since 14% was only the average. So more data collection is my personal opinion, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.